Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the PLC Programming, a tutorial for beginners. This tutorial is for beginners who are just starting to program PLCs. Using the Easy PLC Simple Conveyor, we will move a box back and forth on the conveyor. We will learn to write the PLC Ladder Logic program for this operation. Using the five steps to PLC programming development, we will determine what must be done, look at inputs and outputs, develop the sequence of operation, program the conveyor belt, and test our program. The Easy PLC Machine Simulator is part of the Easy PLC software suite. This package is an excellent way to learn PLC programming without the worry of damaging equipment. We will be programming with the free Do More Designer PLC software. The Easy Machine Simulator will be communicating with the Do More Designer PLC Simulator. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. The first step of PLC program development is determining what must be done. A PLC programmer must know everything about the machine before programming. Start the Easy PLC Machine Simulator or MS. Select the Start button on the main page or select Machines from the main menu on the top of the Machine Simulator window. All of the available machines will now be displayed. Click on the Zero First Test. This is the conveyor that we will be programming. To the left of the screen, information will be displayed. This will indicate what the machine needs to do and the inputs and outputs required for the program. The object is to move the pallet with the roller conveyor. First to the right until the photo cell on the right side activates. The conveyor rollers will then stop and reverse, so the box moves to the left until the photo on the left side activates. The process repeats, moving the roller conveyor again to the right. The pallet will continuously move back and forth on the roller conveyor. The machine simulator has a demo mode for the built-in machines. This will allow you to watch the operation of the conveyor pallet. Select the demo mode for the first test. The demo will operate showing you the basics of operation. Move around the 3D virtual environment. Three icons on the top of the window will allow you to move around this 3D environment. The first icon is the default selection. This will enable you to move around without bumping into the components. The first person mode will mimic a person in your 3D learning world. The last icon will automatically show you around this virtual environment. Once we understand what must be done, we can move on to the next step in the PLC program development. The view I.O. at the bottom of the machine simulator window will display the inputs and outputs required for this conveyor example. While still in demo mode, we can see the operation of the digital inputs and outputs. The Easy PLC conveyor example will require two digital outputs and two digital inputs. Start the machine in start mode. If you are unsure what outputs or inputs are doing, we can manually control them. Select the view I.O. on the bottom middle of the machine simulator window. You can manually run the conveyor application without any control or PLC connection. Clicking on the outputs will allow you to turn them on manually. You can then monitor the inputs to see their operation. The restart button on the bottom of the machine simulator will reset the scene back to the start. The Easy PLC machine simulator will allow you to program and make mistakes with destruction of property or equipment. The box could fall off the conveyor if the sensor is missed and activating the conveyors advance and reverse will burn up the motors.
Leaving this on too long will stop the machine from operating. You will then need to reset the machine with the restart button. We will now look at the setup of our PLC simulator. This will use Modbus TCP for communication to the Easy PLC machine simulator. Start the Doomore Designer software. The Brix BRX Doomore series will detail how to install and use this free, fully functional Doomore Designer PLC programming software. Select Online under New Project in the File option on the main menu. Select My Sim, which is the Do More Designer PLC simulator. Select the icon Connect. Our Do More simulator will now be displayed. This PLC simulator is treated like a PLC. We must program and transfer the program to the simulator for it to operate. Simulator has three modes. Run will execute the ladder logic program. Terminal mode, or TERM, will allow us to control the run and stop modes from the Do More Designer software. The stop mode will halt the execution of our ladder logic program. We will leave the simulator in terminal mode. You will notice that the simulator will be display the digital and analog inputs and outputs in several memory locations. The Ethernet, RX, and TX signals are flashing. This indicates the simulator is communicating. Click on the Do More Designer programming window. You will see that we are connected to the simulator at the bottom of the window. It is currently in terminal mode and in program. Select the edit mode icon on the main menu. This will allow us to start programming our PLC simulator. Under the coil bit IO heading in the instruction toolbox, double click on the end statement. This will put the instruction on the ladder logic run you are currently on. Select the green check mark to verify the location of the end instruction. The program rung will now have a yellow indicating light, meaning that you will need to be accept the change to our program. Select the accept icon on the main menu. Yellow is now replaced with green and blue indications. The green means that our program has yet to be saved. We will hit the save icon on the main menu. This will prompt us for our name of the save program. Select OK. Another prompt will now allow us to fill in information about our program. Select OK. The blue indicator means that the program in the PLC is different from the program currently in the Do More Designer software. Press the right PLC icon on the main menu. The downloaded project to the PLC window will now be displayed. We will download our project in program mode. Select OK. Our program has now been written into the Do More Designer PLC simulator. Select the mode icon on our main menu and select run as the new mode. Select OK. The run mode is indicated at the bottom of the Do More Designer window. The Doomore family of controllers utilizes a separate memory area for Modbus. MI1 and MI2 will be used for controlling the forward and reverse of the conveyor. MC1 and MC2 will indicate the photocell status. We will use the data monitor to view these bits. Select the data icon on the main menu. This data view window will appear under Project Browser. Click and drag this out to appear in a separate window. We will now enter our inputs and outputs. One last thing we need to know before connecting the PLC simulator to the Easy PLC machine simulator is the IP address of the PLC. This is the IP for the computer, but we can also find this out by selecting System Configuration under Tools in the Project Browser. 
The IP address is shown under the internal Ethernet port configuration. To the right hand side of the selection is the Modbus TCP server configuration. The enable Modbus TCP server is on by default. We will connect the inputs and outputs from the Easy PLC machine simulator to the Do More Designer simulator using Modbus TCP. Returning to the machine simulator, you can see that we have no PLC connected in start mode. This is indicated in the bottom left corner. Select I.O. drivers on the bottom middle of the screen. The Easy PLC driver is selected by default. Select the down arrow on the driver's name. Under the driver pull down menu, select Modbus driver. This driver will communicate Modbus TCP or Ethernet and Modbus RTU serial. Select the configure button. We can now enter the information for our Modbus driver. Select TCP IP. This means the computer's Ethernet port will communicate to the PLC. We can now enter the IP address that we have on our Do More Designer simulator. The digital inputs from MS to the Do More PLC will be 100001 and 10002. This will start at address 0 due to the offset of 1. Digital outputs from MS to Do More PLC will be 1 and 2. This will begin at address 0 due to the offset of 1. Select the OK button. You will now see the inputs and outputs specified for the Modbus driver. We can manually assign the, the driver outputs to the PLC inputs and the driver inputs to the PLC outputs. However, the automatic assignment works well and will save you time. Select Automatic Assignment from the Driver option in the main menu. This will automatically assign the PLC I.O. to the Machine Simulator I.O. Select Start Driver and Exit from the main menu. On the bottom left of the window, you will see that the driver communicates to the PLC with the green light. Select View I.O. to know the input and output status of the Machine Simulator. We can now test the PLC's inputs and outputs by calling up the data view window from the Do More Designer software. Operating the outputs from the data view window, we can move the conveyor back and forth. We are now connected to our PLC. We are ready to move on to the next step. A flowchart, sequence table, or detailed sequence description is used to understand the process that needs to be controlled. You may think that this is, this is like step one, but it will go into more detail and utilize all the inputs and outputs that need to be programmed. It must also answer questions like the following. What happens when electrical power or pneumatic air is lost? What happens when inputs and output devices fail? Do we need redundancy? This step is where you'll spend most of your time. Understanding everything about the operation will save you time. It will help prevent you from continuously rewriting the PLC logic. Knowing all of these answers up front is vital in developing the PLC program. Our system is simple, but it will help you understand the thinking behind writing a ladder logic program. A box on the conveyor belt will be moved back and forth. Upon powering up the PLC and the end sensors do not detect the box, move the conveyor in the forward direction. Stop the conveyor's forward movement when the forward se sensor detects the box. Wait one second, then move the conveyor in the reverse direction. Stop the conveyor's reverse movement when the reverse sensor detects the box. Wait for one second, then move the conveyor in the forward direction again. This cycle will continuously cycle. The one second delay at the end of each conveyor will ensure that both outputs are not on simultaneously. A programmer must know everything about the sequence and operation of the machine before programming. Ask questions or review existing documentation to ensure that you know the logical steps to the machine's operation. Writing the ladder logic code for the PLC example will be the next step in our program development. The Bricks Do More series will provide additional information on the Do More Designer and PLC Simulator. We will be using the online programming of our PLC Simulator. 
As our program has developed, you can see its operation. In step two, we establish communication between the Easy PLC machine simulator and the PLC simulator. This used Modbus TCP or Ethernet, and we called up the IMI1 and MI2, which were the conveyor forward and reverse directions, and MC1 and MC2 were the sensors for the direction. Manually turning these bits on and off, we moved the pallet. This proved our inputs and outputs were functionally correct. The first rung that we will write will control the forward direction, MI1. We will use the set and reset instructions to set logic for each condition. The first scan of the PLC will turn on the system bit ST0. Not MC1, the forward sensor, will be anded together with the first scan and set the forward direction. This means that the forward direction will not be set when the forward sensor detects an object. MC1 will be used to reset the forward direction. Online programming is a great feature, but must be used with caution on physical equipment. We can save the program and write to the PLC. The write will happen while the PLC is running. What happens is the scan is held and new lines are inserted into the program. When the scan is released, it will be running the new program. If we switch our PLC simulator to stop mode and turn back to run, our pallet will move forward and stop at the sensor. This is due to the first scan flag starting the conveyor in the forward direction. We can now add our one second delay timer when the forward photocell is activated. This will be timer zero. Timer zero done bit will be in series with the normally closed reversed photo cell. This will set the reverse conveyor direction. When MC2, the reverse photo cell is on, this will set the reverse conveyor. Save the program and write to the PLC. The timer will time and send the conveyor in the opposite direction. It will stop when the reverse photocell is activated. We will add an, another one second delay timer when the reverse cell is active. This will be timer one. Timer 1 done bit is placed in parallel with the first scan bit of the PLC on rung 1. Save the program and write to the PLC. Our program is now complete. The pallet is moving back and forth.
Documentation is one of the essential things with PLC programming. Knowing what the program is doing years after you develop the logic can be critical. On the main menu, select Tools, Documentation Editor. You can also call the Document Editor using the Control D keyboard shortcut. All of the elements that have been used in the program are listed. We can assign names to each of them. Ensure that the PLC is in run mode. We can see the operation of our simple conveyor. Test the program under many conditions. Stop the pallet at each end of the conveyor. What will happen when the PLC logic is started again? Change the timer set value to 500 milliseconds at each end. Simple modifications like this are easily done using online programming with the PLC. Move the box around and trick the sensor. This is all part of the program testing. You may have to rewrite your ladder logic code if something unexpected happens. This may even mean that you have to change your operational sequence. To help you practice and learn more, here are a few challenges for this simple conveyor. Number one, add a start and stop control station to the easy PLC machine. Add the controls to your existing PLC ladder logic. Number two, count the number of times the box has moved back and forth. And the third one would be if the box falls off the conveyor, detect this and stop the conveyor. Let me know how you make out in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.